Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Morgan and in today's video, I'll be doing a Q&A for some frequently asked questions or just some random questions that some of you have been asking. And yeah, so let's get into this video. So the first question is, this one is definitely asked a lot. So a lot of you are concerned about the math or physics component of ultrasound because you're not, that's probably not your strong suit or you just, you just don't like the subject. So yeah, you have to do math to get into the program, but it's like a, it's like a basic college algebra math, nothing crazy as a prereq. Then once you're in the program, and you also have to do a basic physics to get in the program also as a prereq, but once you're in the program, it's basically an ultrasound physics that you have to do. And that's supposed to prepare you to take the SPI, which is, um, which is the basic exam that you need before taking all the other registries like the special registries like abdomen ob vascular or echo and all the other ones so yeah there is physics i took two semesters of physics but it's really not like the physics that we're used to in high school or in college it's ultrasound physics so it focuses on the machine so there's not much you know Newton this and whatnot that you learn in physics or and there's not a lot of math either it's basically knobology so you're learning the knobs how the images are displayed on the screen and a bunch of that type of stuff because you're gonna be operating the machine so they just want to know that you're aware and knowledgeable about the machine and that you're able to optimize the images in order to give the doctor the best results to form a diagnosis so you don't have to worry about physics if you're never good in high school or even in college because it's completely different there's minimal math and it, if there is math from my recollection it's basic math like so, some addition and they you can use a calculator but even when i took the spi there was never any crazy math where i needed a calculator it was very simple simple division simple multiplication um yeah so Definitely don't worry about the math or physics component if you're interested in ultrasound. Don't let that stop you from enrolling in the program or choosing this as a career because it's really not that bad. The next question, okay. So the next question is if you need a rad tech degree or an x-ray degree in order to do sonography. So for my program, that used to be a requirement, but they took that out and now they have all the, you know, separate prerequisites and their point-based system which i've discussed in another video so if you have a bachelor's degree you get more points an associate's degree you get more points if you're coming straight from high school you just get like a certain amount of points for just taking the prereqs but um yeah they don't need you don't need the degree in order to be enrolled in the program or get accepted but there are schools out there that still require that so definitely look around in the location that you want to do the program and check their specific requirements because it it varies by school so some schools might require an x-ray degree before doing ultrasound some might not but i think a lot of them are taking out that requirement because really they're not even related they're both on the radiology but sonography you don't need to know x-ray in order to become a sonographer so that's that question um the next one was can you become a sonographer in one year? So most programs are one year or one and a half years to two years. That That's the length that most programs are. But some programs are four years. And it all depends on your school and how it's structured. Like if you get to pick, pick the certain things that you want to do, like abdomen or OB or vascular or echo. If the school allows you to pick that, then each segment might be a set time but if everything is like structured where they have a set schedule like my school we had to do abdomen ob small parts which is a part of general um and echo like it's structured and they select the classes for you and everything like it's rigid structure um yeah and it was a set two years but other schools, you can enroll and pick echo or enroll and pick vascular. So it all depends on the structure of the school, but most programs are one and a half to two years long. And then if you want to get the bachelor's in sonography, that's definitely four years. 
Um, and that leads me to the next question, which is specializations. How do you specialize? Like maybe you're interested in doing just OB, like how would I do that? So most programs, and I think probably all, well, I'm speaking for general. I'll touch echo and vascular later. So most programs, the abdomen and OB are together. I don't really know of any that strictly you enroll and you can select OB and you just do OB for one year and they graduate you and that's all you know. OB and abdomen or general are usually together. And a lot of the programs they have general, let's call general OB and abdomen. A lot of them have general tied in with either echo or vascular. And then some programs you can pick echo and vascular separately, but many of the programs have general, which is OB and abdomen, together with either echo or together with vascular. So my program had general and echo. So my first year I did general, so we did abdomen and OB, you know, with each other. And then the next year we did strictly echo. So it just depends on your program. So yeah, that's how they're usually structured. Um, and then you can you have the option to pick one alone, like like enroll in only vascular, only echo. Like my school, so for the second year, which was echo, students that did general only from their program, because their program offered general only, they were able to apply for my school and take the echo portion only. So, you know, it's, it's all, it all varies by program. So you have to just inquire, like definitely email your academic advisors or the school program director and ask them about how their system is structured and, you know, pick one that's best suited for you. Um, so yeah, to answer the question, um, you don't pick a specific like, oh, I'm gonna do only only abdomen or only OB well for the most part because it's usually OB and abdomen together as general so there are programs that you can do general only to become a general sonographer or you can pick echo only to become an echocardiographer or you can do vascular only to become a RV a vascular technologist so those are the three different um, specialties or the three main specialties um, that many of the schools offer. Um, next question, do you get paid for clinicals? Unfortunately, we don't. I wish we did, but kind of makes sense, I guess, because it's like we're going to school to learn this. It sucks that we have to pay for it and we're just going there, you know, it's like basically eight hour days. And a lot of times, especially later on in the semester, we're basically doing all the work because we basically know everything. And the more practice we get, the better. So we're gonna grasp at those opportunities. So we're basically working for free, but it's all a part of the learning experience. So no, we don't get paid, but that's just the way it's structured. Just like med school, nursing school, all those schools, they don't get paid for their clinicals. And that's just how it is. <laughs> unfortunately and another one T's exam and then yeah so another one is T's exam do you have to take the T's some schools you do have to take the T's that's a way that they you know strain out strain out the applicants if especially if they're a competitive school um, they put that as a part of the application process in order to best get the strongest applicants and you have to score a certain amount to get into the school but my school we didn't have the t's they just had a different system a different structure on how they accepted people and i think for the most part if you had an advanced degree you were top priority for my school because i think almost all of us in my class had bachelor's degrees or higher so not everyone needs a t's but it will be there on the website if you look they'll tell you if they require it and what the score is that their school accepts the next question is accreditation now there are schools out there that aren't accredited and that sucks i don't know why they why they're even allowed to have a school because it makes it much harder on you after graduating if you're not 
in an if you didn't graduate through an accredited program. Not saying it's impossible to have a career in sonography if you went to a school that's not accredited, but it's definitely advised. And, and employers look, look for that. Some employers won't even accept you into a job if you didn't graduate from an accredited program. So definitely seek an accredited program because what happens is when you're applying for the registry in order to become certified, they look for that also, like through the ARDMS. They look to see if you completed your program through an accredited school. And then, so yeah, I'm not saying it's impossible because they do accept you and you, you can take your license exam if you went to a school that wasn't accredited, but there are a lot of other stipulations, like some more prerequisites that they require of you in addition to you completing the program. So it just makes a pro, the, it just makes the process longer and more complicated and then even after that you're not guaranteed a job because as i said many employers look for look at your school to make sure that your program is accredited so don't think that it doesn't matter which school you go to and that oh as long as i graduate from ultrasound i'll become an ultrasound tech like no the employers some of them are really big on that and they want to make sure that you had the best learning experience and that's what the accreditation process does it ensures that you had quality um, training and standards and everything that is under the ultrasound umbrella that's what accreditation guarantees so definitely definitely if you can well you should go enroll in an accredited program classes to take was another one like I get a lot of that but that was in my first video I think I'll link it in the like in the cards up here um, well, I only went through my school, but it's basically it's like basically the same for most schools. It might be a little bit different, but technically it's like anatomy and physiology one and two, a physics, a math, um, a humanities course like psychology, sociology, or something like that. Um, what else? I can't remember. Like biologies. Was biology on there? I don't think biology was on there, but yeah, something. Some of those it's in the it's in my video so i'll link it um and yeah every school is different like medical terminology and stuff like that so definitely check out your school's website to get a specific list of their prerequisites because it varies by school slightly though it's basically the same stuff um but just to make sure you're taking the exact courses because you don't want to take unnecessary courses and you don't want to be applying and then you're short a few courses and then you have to push everything back and wait to get um into the program another year so check on all of that when you're starting your process so that everything can just go smoothly you can map out which courses you want to take when in order to complete them so that you can apply for the program and have the strongest application um, the strongest application possible when applying but yeah so those are the questions that I got that came up mostly um, if you guys have any more questions feel free to leave them down below or email me and I'll try my best to get back to all of you and respond but yeah that sums up this video I hope this helped you because I know it's very it's a long process and it can get complicated, especially when you're looking at multiple schools in your area or even if you're trying to move out of state and the requirements are like different because every school has their own stipulations. It's just confusing. So I understand I went through it, but luckily I had everything since I had my bachelor's degree already. I had all of the courses. I never needed to take anything, probably medical terminology. I never took that because I never needed it. For my degree and oh i took a speech course because my school required a speech course any speech course but it was pretty simple for me but i know it can be difficult so if you have any questions definitely definitely leave them down below or email me and i'll get back to you as soon as i can so if you like this video give it a like and subscribe down below for more videos and i'll be back in my next one bye guys Thank you.